Right, so today's going to be a little bit of a different video. I'm going to try it out. I see a lot of YouTubers do it. Um, basically, I, I normally do a car specific video, as you know. I do a car and then I do a different car and a different car. But today, I haven't got a car specific I have to do. I've got to do lots of little bits on uh, all the cars, basically. So I'm just going to go and uh, start getting on with bits that I've got to do. You can join me along the way if you want to watch it. If you don't want to watch it, let me know in the comments section what you think. So uh, first off, I've got to get the uh, alloy off of this car because I've just managed to curb it up. It's proper smashed up and uh, going to get that wheel off and start sanding that down and paint that. Got to do some bits to the Evo, some tidying up bits, especially the engine bay. I've had some issues with the cam sync sensor. Um, so it's some wiring issues and I've had to pull all the wiring out. So I've got to tidy all that back up. I've got to do some bits to the red GSI and I might even get the RS turbo running for you just so you can hear the exhaust noise. So yeah, join me on the today's video and if you like it, let me know. Uh, repping the Unknown Performance merch. So you can see here, uh, Unknown Performance merch I've got on today. I forgot I even had it on, but I thought I'd show it off what I did. Um, if you want to grab one of these, go over to the website. The website will be in the description. I've got some grey ones left. Um, and I will be getting some black and blue ones back in soon um, and some hoodies as well for the autumn. Right, so now moving on to the Evo's engine. So basically, the other day I spent a good eight hours or so of the day sorting out a cam sync issue with this car. So basically it would drop um, signal to two of the coils. Uh, the trigger scope was telling us it was running right, but it just started, I don't know what the computer was doing, but it wasn't right. So I ended up taking the loom apart from the cam sensor and there was some iffy wiring in there, sorted that out, managed to get all four sparking again. So, because I had to do that, obviously I was diagnosing things and I pulled all the loom apart and it was all wire tucked down the back of this inlet and I've had to pull it all apart, you can see, and it's looking untidy again. So I'm just gonna clean all that up now um, and then start the car up just to make sure everything's working still again. So look at the state of this wiring. I remember in the previous episodes, I said that they must have got their black tape on special offer, but look at all the black tape that I'm removing. It's the cheapest, nastiest crap. Um, obviously this is for the math sensor wiring and stuff that was in there in the past and there's wires in there I've actually cut some out but you can see here there's wires in there that ain't even been terminated properly there's another one there um, obviously that might be an earth but there's looks like that's a power and they're just inside the loom they're not even being uh, um, terminated properly at least they put some shrink tube over the top of this one actually done a decent job probably two different people so there's a crimp here for the curl packs you can see that's a bit iffy so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut that and put in another section in there because that's only going to cause problems in the future um yeah so i'm going to put some sleeve in and stuff over there make it look a lot tidier than it is that's the actual engine loom so wiring that's another job ticked off the list you can see what i've done is i've conjugated all the cables all the connections this main one that was just absolutely terrible i've put a nice thick bit of conduit in there just to protect all that wiring so that all that wiring's inside there it's all been um terminated everything's been done properly so everything here it's all been like Tesla taped up. You know, the only tape that I really use is genuine Tesla tape. And uh, that's all going to be cable tie with little mini cable ties down the back of the inlet manifold. So let's get to wire tucking that back up. I just wanted to show you how much tidier that is. Right, so I've just tucked all that wiring down the back of the inlet manifold. You can see it's tucked underneath the fuel rail now. Just little pigtails coming up for the injectors, all the coil pack, everything. It's all nice and tidy down there, all cable tied up. You can see. That's a lot better than it was. Um, I've just left the cam sensor wiring at the minute because I've got to wire in a new plug because I damaged this one when I was actually probing it and messing around with it for the, uh, obviously taking it apart for the cam trigger. So I've got a new plug on its way, so I'm gonna leave that one uncoated so that I can just get onto soldering that one when it comes. Right, so this Evo starter motor is absolutely cooked now. It sounds like a bag of old nails, even though it's taken apart, re-greased and that now. It's, it's absolutely knackered. You can see all the teeth on here. You look in the sun quickly. Literally, they're all chewed up. It's an original unit, it's been on there forever. So, um, went out and got a new unit. This is an OEM refurbished unit. It's from a later model. So literally exactly the same, except for the only difference is, if you've got a later model and you wanna change it over, it's very simple. You can see here, the terminal that triggers the starter motor is on the top. And on the earlier models, it's actually on the bottom, you can see there. But all they do is they just solder it into this top part instead of the bottom part. So just got to switch that plug around. Very simple job. So we can get this on now. Another good thing is, well, it's got some threads in that part now instead of a nut and bolt going through. You can see this one had been stripped. So I had to go through with a nut and bolt. So 
get this on, stop it moving around. Hopefully it will start up a lot quicker. So a couple more things have turned up. So we've got a new battery here and uh, the old battery, obviously it was on the car, has had so many discharges now. It's charged up, discharged down to 0%, back up again. It just can't hold charge anymore. So it can't crank over enough. You can see it's a 620 amp battery. But it's just not good enough. So I've got a brand new battery, another Eraser battery as well, but it's a little bit more cranky now. It ain't gonna make much difference. So just bought a brand new one of these. Uh, you can see it's 640 amps on this one. Uh, so I'm going to get that one fitted. Also, we've got some new lines here, some Brady lines for this oil cooler. So as you know, that I made this oil cooler up in a previous episode. You can see this kit here that I made up, all the bracket tree, all the pipe work, whatever. But because it was slightly modified and slightly moved, um, I've had to extend these lines maybe half an inch, which is really awkward because I've got to make these lines up again. So just all the two meters of... Uh, braided line because i went to go with a braided line it looked good with these black fittings so i've got to just make these um, lines another half an inch to an inch bigger to fit onto the uh, the car in the position that they're in so got to take these off modify the fittings and put on some new lines so gonna get this battery on now hopefully it'll turn over a lot better so i just stuck it onto a trickle charger quickly just to fill it up with that extra couple of amps because they don't fully charge these and obviously they don't hold charge while they're sitting you can see here this is the reason why i'm replacing the other one as soon as it gets below 10 volts or 10.6 volts it's basically 100 percent discharged and it, the battery is knackered that's why they don't give you no warranty when it's uh below that amount so you can just got to keep it above 50 percent if you ain't going to use a car for a while keep it on a trickle charger or you're going to kill the battery forever So finally, it's all come to fruition now with these giant battery cables that are on here, the earth and the uh, positive. This brand new battery, 640 cranking amps and that brand new starter motor now, you just see how fast this car turns over now. So very, very happy. All that works made it pay off and now the car starts with, on a button. So you can start it without any throttle now and it will start up perfectly. So very happy with that. If you have got an Evo starting up slowly and you have issues with starting problems with a battery re relocation, Change the power cables, change the battery, and change the starter motor, and the thing will start up on the button. So in a previous episode, I know you see me making up this oil called a bracket and the pipeline. So basically, the lines were, because I obviously moved the oil cooler about, the lines were about an inch and a half um, too short. So I've just redone this one. You can see it's not loose or anything, it's still in the mock-up stages. So everything's loose, ready to be tightened up. So that one's on there. You can see that one's up to the oil pump takeoff. And then I've got this one round here to do. So I'm gonna show you how to make these lines up because in the last episode, some people did say they'd like to see the actual line being made. So I'm gonna show you how to make these yourself from AM fittings and stainless braided hosing. Right, so you can see here, this is the hose strip down. So I've just took the fittings off because obviously these are brand new fittings and I'm gonna reuse them. So you can see here, this hose has got to be an inch and a half longer. It's not a lot, but it's enough to put too much tension on the hose itself. And I want it to have, so it don't ever split, don't ever pull apart, and there's no danger of problems with the oil cooler. So we're gonna get rid of this hose and we're gonna cut a nice fresh bit. But first I'm gonna measure it up. You can see here, basically all you do is tape it over. I'm gonna use a reciprocating saw on mine. They've got a special tool that they use at HEL to do it. So we've got some nice fresh hose in there to do. And I'm gonna show you how to make this fitting up. Right, so all I've done here is I've just measured this hose and and I've taped right in the center of the measurement. So the measurement comes to the dead center of this tape. So it's just black electrical tape, an inch and a half longer. So you can see if you look at that, if I get that lined up properly, it's an inch and a half longer than that hose there. So I'm gonna cut that dead center in there, and then this is gonna be the new hose that we're gonna use. So now that's cut, it's as easy as this. So basically you've got to get this collar over the top of the braided hose. And that's why we put the tape around it. You can see these little bits of frayed. Just gotta cut them off because they won't get this collar as a nice tight interface fit. You can see it won't push on there with them little bits of frayed fittings. So make sure everything's smooth and tight to the rubber and then slot this collar over the top. Right, you can see inside there that the actual hose lip is now flush with the fitting itself. So you can see inside it's absolutely pushed as far as it can go. So that collar is on there nice and tightly now. Right, so now lube up this fitting so you can actually slide this one over the top and also lube up inside the fitting itself because this has got to be pushed over the top of here. And it's obviously going to be tight. You can see it's tapered. And you've basically got to get onto this thread with this to then do it up. So 
Now it's all lubed up. Push on there nice and tightly and twist it until you feel the thread. And there you go. So the thread is now attached. So you can pretty much turn that quite a long of the way. And then you have to start turning it once it gets stiff because it's obviously pushing inside that hose and flaring out to create obviously a tight fit so it doesn't leak. So as you can see, that's the furthest I can go by hand. It's got way too tight now. So you can see there's still a gap there and this is the gap that's gonna create the seal now. So you've got to do this up with a spanner, nice and tight. You can get aluminum spanners that you do them up with, but I just wrap a little bit of black tape around a, a normal adjustable and it doesn't damage these in any way. As you can see, it's not damaged from last time. Do that up nice and tight and that's pretty much done. Now I've done loads and loads of these, so obviously it looks easy. Get out there and practice, get yourself some hosing, get yourself some fittings. And after a few times, you'll have the knack of it and be able to do it yourself. So there we go, that's both ends on there, nice, nice and tidy. You've got the fittings on either end, so we can get this back on the oil cooler now. So I'm trying to give you a quick guide of how to do it. Go out there and try it yourself, get some hosing, get some fittings, and uh, give it a go. And you can make some nice tidy hoses like this for your breather lines or you know high pressure oil lines. And uh, these are gonna last for a long, long time. So I recommend going with a braided line rather than nylon line. I've got nylon line as well. Uh, braided look better as well, especially with the black fittings. You can see how nice that looks. So let's get that fitted. So that's the lines all nicely made up, looking fresh. You can see on there, perfect fitment now. Go round the sump, look really good. You can see they're all done up nice and tight now. And I'm just gonna get a clamp to clamp these two together, to sort of bridge them together, uh, instead of like cable tying them, because they just end up tapping. Get a nice little mount in there. And that's it, job done with these lines, just top it up with some oil. So I can get round to addressing the smaller stuff now. So this line here has been really bugging me ever since obviously the car was ever built. Just laziness, I have no idea why it's got a right angle. I wanna shorten it, so I wanna just go from there to there, just get rid of all this nasty line that's there. So I'm gonna shorten this down, got a fitting for this now. Uh, while I'm there as well, this dump valve's getting um, deleted because it's, well, the spring pressure's too low in it at the minute and Rather hear some chatter, this big turbo can handle a bit of uh, turbo chatter. So we're gonna blank that off, got a blank for that as well. So I blank that off and then I'm gonna make this line a little bit shorter just so it don't look like it's going all the way around the engine bay. So that's the little dinky line made up for the breather and I've cut off so much off that I could nearly make another line up. Ridiculous amount of excess. That's gonna look a lot tidier in there. Let's get that on. So that's that nice little dinky line made up and it's fitted lovely. So you can see there, didn't need any of that stupid bends. Don't go all the way around the engine bay now. One annoying little thing is when they made this hose up, they've made it probably half an inch too long. So you can see here, it ain't straight. It's got a slight kink in it because it's just a little bit too long and that's really gonna bug me. So I'm gonna probably end up trimming that down so it's nice and straight. Right, so no, it might sound extreme, but I've just went over the whole car again. I've took all four wheels off and I've bled the brakes again. Made sure that we've got that good motor racing fluid through all the braking lines so we've got no contamination between two different braking fluids because when I bled the actual clutch on this, the brake fluid that obviously runs off the same, like the master cylinder into the slave cylinder, um, the fluid was black and the fluid that was coming out of the brake lines as well weren't much better. So went over there and bled them again so all the fluid through, so we've got motor fluid all the way through, used two litres of it so I know it's definitely there. Um, obviously on the old race fluid we used to have it blue and uh, that would let me know when the blue tinge would come through and I know fresh fluid, but obviously good old Europeans, they decided that uh, brake fluid can't be blue. So it's gotta be brown. So you can't really tell the difference other than getting like black fluid through and then it's fresh brake fluid. So I can drop it back on its wheels. I won't have to touch the braking system again. Just bed them brakes in, some hard stopping to get them carbon pads heated up. So a quick little top tip for you. If you're ever doing drums, you know, discs, drums, whatever, when you've got these shoes inside, you can see here, just go over a little bit of 80 grit sandpaper and deglaze them. So you can see here, you've got like a matte finish there. Yeah, obviously, if you've got some life left in them, just deglaze them and you can see what they look like when they're actually glazed. They've got this shiny texture to them and they're not gonna do much braking on the handbrake at all. Um, if you feel this side now, it's lovely and rough and it's actually gonna have some sort of adhesion, some sort of a braking power for the handbrake. So just literally go over it, a little bit of 80 grit, you can see there, basically just key it up and then you know you, you take off that glaze off the top, that little bit of rust that gets bedded into the disc and it gets, you can hear the noise that you get out of it as opposed to the smooth surface. So a little bit of a tip there, 
just to prolong the life of your shoes so you don't have to replace them. Although it looks like a bomb site here at the minute, we're getting things done and that's more important. So at the minute, I'm just gonna go over these Brembo's and bleed them again because I had to take the lines off and then move them about and do some adjustments. So just put some new fluid in there. I just got another liter of the multiple race fluid because that's what's in there at the minute. So I'm just gonna go over and bleed the whole of the Brembo setup again. And then the winner of the sticker competition, obviously black and white was the white. So I'm gonna put some white Brembo decals on there and they're gonna look fresh against the uh, silver and the red. So let's give you a little show. So the car is obviously off, no throttle input at all. Prime the pump, let all the stepper motors quickly switch over and then just turn it over, should just fire straight up. And there we go. So absolutely no throttle input needed. I know you think, oh, that's normal, but it's actually not on this car. Absolutely not. So it's been a nightmare from the start. Idle's absolutely spot on now, very happy with that. So a good AFR is that it seems happy around at the minute. It's around the high 13s, you can see. Um, when it goes into the 14s and that, it doesn't really get happy with that. The car's up to temperature, it's at full temperature there, you can see. Right guys, after a monumental amount of effort after this car really did test us in the previous months, it's all come to fruition and the car is sitting there ready to drive. So fresh brake fluid, fresh brakes all the way around. The car starts on the button now, all the fuel adjustments are sorted so we can take this out on the road. Cam sensor issues all sorted. Car idles absolutely spot on with no throttle input. Just got to adjust the throttle pedal itself because I'm used to electric throttle bodies and uh, the cable there is a little bit, uh, where it's a little bit slack before it gets the uh, input into the throttle. Um, body itself so just got to adjust that that's pretty much the final thing put the cover on this and then we can actually get this thing on the road and start uh, the mapping process so obviously we're gonna get you know we're gonna stick some boost into it maybe around two bar see what it does should do well really drives nice last time we took it out absolute drive spot on you could daily this car it's got a twin plate clutch and it drives amazingly um, you could definitely definitely daily this car so what do you think <laughs> So we're doing an airbox change on the RS because it had this air filter on it that was doing no filtering at all. So basically what happened is it had killed the old math. You can see the amount of dirt and that that's getting in there. Absolutely disgusting. You can see it's properly bodged on there as well with uh, gaffer tape and all sorts of things. So we've got two air boxes. Um, one of them's got a cracked lid and the other one's got some problems with the studs uh, in the math housing. So we're just gonna make the best of both so you can see here this one got a cracked in it this one's got a good lid so we're going to swap them over and make the good out of two housings they're actually expensive air boxes to buy because uh, you know it's a specific car for the mark one rs So the airbox has to come in from underneath. So just jack the car up, got the car up in the air. So I'm just in the process of bending all these brackets back at the minute because they was all bent out of the way for the existing air filter. You can see here there's like some weird bracketry going on that was holding on the uh, ex the air filter that was on it. Using that square nut, I'm not even sure what's going on there, but it looks like that bracket there has been bent out of the way and that's the actual bolt that goes into here. So you can see I'm just bending it all back in a minute, tidying up. So this is basically a mock-up. Just mocking it up at the minute. Um, got these side in, got the two at the top in. So we're getting somewhere. So luckily with this airbox, a bit of heat, and I managed to get that stud out of the math housing. Didn't think that was gonna come out, so that was properly seized in there, you can see. Tried everyone, everything to get that out, but managed to get that out. But now I've got another problem. The math sensor, even though this is supposed to be a, a high quality German part, we asked for a Bosch one, they couldn't supply it, so they supplied us to this one. 
undone it and it doesn't even though it fits in there the bolt holes don't line up obviously like everything else on this car it's so specific to this car so you can see under there doesn't line up there doesn't line up up there um, the original sensor is different bolt spacing so I've been having fun with this airbox so I managed to get the stud out of the actual math housing itself you can see there it's actually quite difficult to remove but managed to get that out you can see a little bit of heat and uh, got it out it was properly stuck in there so that allows me to use this better side of the housing it's only got one crack and it actually sits in there nice but the other issue is the original Ford sensor obviously is knackered you can see like it's absolutely trashed um, and the original pattern part that they've given us to replace that with you can see the bolt hole spacing when you unbolt it is slightly different you can see this top left hand corner maybe a centimeter out so when you put that into the air box itself you can see there that top one just about gets it but that bottom one is a mile out you can see it down there the bolt hole just doesn't line up at all so as you can see here the airbox is all fitted now it's only mock fitted up there in a minute i need to put a new mass sensor as you see the mass sensor was knackered and we've got an air filter coming but it's all mocked up for the brackets now so you can see all the brackets and everything lying back up and that's what i wanted i've actually recently been asked about this car a lot the zaf it ain't been on the channel for a while I ain't been having to do nothing to it ultra reliable just doing an oil change on it right now but it'll be on the channel very soon because i'm going to be going stage 3.5 of it you can see still looks good clean car they put a lot more effort into the body kit on the uh, Zafira than they did on the GSI it would be nice if they did have wide arches on them but they didn't so we'll uh, get this back on the channel soon I love the arches on these I wish I could put them onto the uh, GSI on the Astra G it's a shame you can't um, really only the coupe turbo was the only one that had the arches put on them but we're getting this back, back on the channel soon the boost bust will be uh, stage 3.5 as you see all the bits that we put on it before loads of stuff Courtney in the cooler full Neil Tech is all system so right, so just let the tire pressure out of the tire so it's nice and flat now I'm going to use this little mini three inch uh, grinder so I've used a uh, 60 grit disc but it's a used one so it's more like an 80 grit a little bit softer uh, I want to get right back to bare metal obviously so I can start filling in these little uh, chunks that have been taken out the metal you can see there not very deep so just one skimmer probably do that. I just cleaned up the tire with some brake cleaner, obviously, just to get rid of the tire shining out on it. So I ain't rubbing that into the metal and it's going to react with a primer and then put some primer over the top. We have to blend it in. Right, loads and loads of sand in later. You can see I've blended it all in as well. I've um, obviously keyed up all the lacquer, um, any other bits where I've stone chip or whatever is. I've gone as smooth as I can without using any filler. I know you can't fill that, but it doesn't need any filler on it. There was a nasty stone chip in there. Um, I haven't filled these in yet. I just wanted to show you the fillers that I'll be using. So um, obviously different jobs require different fillers and I'll try to get the best fillers that I can. So this is a plastic filler. It's probably the best one I've ever used. Really, really good filler, U-Pole 706 for plastic bumpers and everything it's the only one i've went for and i've used a ton of them um, for little light scratches like i've got on here i'm just going to use body filler so obviously body fillers for metal it's nice and easy to be able to sand it all back it's nice and smooth so i'll be able to uh, sand that back put some primer and get this painted today because i need it back on um, if i was going for deep scratches on these alloys you know if you had big chunks and that missing out of it i'll be using chemical metal so chemical metal is a lot harder than normal filler so it takes a lot longer to sand this will get sanded down a lot smoother and a lot easier a lot quicker with less grit obviously the best way if you've got a massive chunk out your wheel you're going to need to get alloy welded don't try like filling a big chunk out your wheel there's no strength in that um, but if you've got any deep lumps out of it so um, you know a couple of mil deep it's better to just go over it with the chemical metal it's a lot harder and it's going to last a lot longer right so we're all taped up ready for some primer now you can see when you let the tire down you actually get a nice gap in there and you stick like a a bit of wood or something in there and it pushes the tape so you still got the edge of the rim if you want to go extreme you can actually pop that tire out the bead um, but i wouldn't recommend it for your first time so we're going to wipe this down with some panel wipe now get some primer on there ready for the base coat 
So the whole wheel is coated in etch now. You can see how smooth it is already and obviously etch primer is really thin. So I'm gonna put some high build over the top of that. What I normally do is I use etch as almost like an isolator primer. I know it's not used for that and it's not meant for that, but there's not really much that etch primer does react with because it ain't got a lot of solvents in it. And there's not actually a lot that etch primer reacts with as a base coat or a lacquer as well on the top. So if I just put a base coat over that, it's sort of isolated from um, actually reacting underneath. If I put a high solvent, primer over the top of whatever's underneath of that it's normally going to react with it so it's a quick job like this i normally do use etch primer in a higher build over the top of it it makes it a lot quicker and i don't get no reactions because as you know reactions are a nightmare because you have to start sanding everything back Right, there we go. So I've just washed the car, so I thought I'd give you a perfect time to show you the wheel. Forgot to show you it up close once it's been uh, painted because I was too busy getting it painted and forgot to do a clip. So obviously it's a little bit wet at the minute, but it's had uh, three or four days to dry. See, lacquer's absolutely perfectly. So obviously just water on it at the minute. And uh, happy with that's come out. Looks like, looks really fresh. Looks like factory again. Perfect. So you probably noticed, lately I haven't been able to post nowhere near as much as I usually post or want to post about the cars. And it's because I'm doing a lot of general maintenance around uh, like my garages and driveway, etc. Um, and you know, I just thought I'd show you stuff that I've been getting on with like other than cars. I've had to strip down this whole garage, replace all the frame in here. You can see I've put all uh, new beams and everything in. I'll show you inside as well. So it's been quite a job. I've had to take the whole roof off, you can see. And it's, uh, no, just been put all back together and just uh, stripped down the door. I'm going to give that a coat of uh, galvanizing paint as well so that don't ever rust. It is galvanized already. I've just stripped all the paint off it. One of the longest jobs of my life. Just got to do a little bit of sanding smooth. You can see it's already galvanized and it's no got no damage or anything on it. So a lot of the paint just peeled off. I'm just going to go over it quickly with a light sand and then get that painted. You can see I've just put all these frames in around the doors because they was all rotten. Um, same here. You can see here been doing some building works along here. So uh, yeah, there's been a lot of lot going on behind the scenes, just not cars. So you can see, obviously, the cars are here. They're all stacked up. But I've been doing a lot of work on the garages and other stuff. So that's why I've been posting lately. Well, that looks a little bit better than it did. So just to put over some galvanized coating over the garage door. Done some welding down here, which I'll show you in a sec. I've uh, just primed, double primed all the way around all the wood. It's going to have a fascia board up here. The lights are going to be put back on it as well so I can work outside. In this section here when it's dark still got the light up on the wall here um, you can see fixed all this uh, coping stones and the ridge tiles and everything i'm going to get up there i'm going to jet wash all them tiles off so that you can see just about there where they had slid down and it's been protected um, so it looks like if i jet wash them off the coating will actually come off and it look a bit fresher again so i love the modern colors at the minute obviously the silvers and the grays um, obviously like really bright colors as well on the cars at the minute and old cars and just going through different phases at the minute so i think that looks a lot better than it did